Welcome to Outlaw Edge Blade Works. Um, so I got a very special friend here today, and uh, I want you guys to uh, I want to introduce you guys to him, and then uh, I'm gonna let him talk for a little bit. And this is Gene Shadley, and he's a knife maker. Hey everybody. Um, so I got some questions I want to ask him real quick. That way, we, because uh, he he's kind of limited on time, and uh, I don't want him to sit here and talk all day. And I know he's got stuff to do, and we're gonna use the English will later today. But uh, this is some of the beautiful stuff that he builds, and he's an artist. And uh, his, his work to me is stunning. I mean, it's amazing. And then I'll let him talk about that stuff in a little bit. But uh, what's your uh, favorite kind of knife still to use? I use ATS uh, 34 stainless steel. It holds a good edge. It's easy to sharpen. And um, I always uh, try to make my stuff so it's function first. It needs to be able to work. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. Uh, were you a machinist? Or what was your occupation when you started? Uh, I worked in a woodworking shop for a number of years. I've had lots of uh, different jobs. I worked in an iron ore mine for a while. I uh, don't have any formal uh, machining training. Pretty much self-taught and everything. I visited a few knife shops around the country and uh, the knife makers are quite free to share information, which is a great thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to do something. And. Uh, I just started making things uh, when I was quite young. Model airplanes when I was in my um, eight, nine years old. I started building black powder firearms when I was 13, and the knives came out of uh, building and shooting black powder firearms. It's awesome. Um, are you self-taught? Uh, <laughs> and if not, who inspired you to build knives? <laughs> I am pretty much self-taught. Um, a friend of mine, Richard Riedel, who has uh, passed away recently, um, got me going on black powder firearms and I was visiting him one day and he had out a, a cutting torch and a car spring and was busy cutting on that and I got there and I'm wondering what he was doing he said, building a knife. He said, why don't you buy a knife? He said, well, I can't find anything that I really like so I'll make my own. And of course that fit right in with my, uh, my background. If I wanted something, I pretty much had to make it. I, I grew up poor and Still have most of that left. Of it. So. Uh, do you have any new uh, knife designs coming out anytime soon? I'm working on making some uh, automatics um, and flippers. Yes. These are uh, these are a couple of flipper patterns that I make. And there's another one here. And what did you say this one was called? This is, I call this a flipper ripper. And look at this, look at it on the end here, babe. That's your te temple spike there. Oh, that's all. <laughs> In case the blade doesn't work. What is the design <laughs> of this knife? Where does that come from? It's basically just kind of a fantasy sort of a piece. Okay. It's beautiful though. I'm mostly known for uh, making uh, multi-bladed slip joint folders. This is a little Warren Cliff half whittler. It's a single blade Warren Cliff. And the one over here, this is a <clears throat> called a lobster pattern or manicure knife. It's 14 karat gold pins and shield and a white pearl handle material. I also make some more traditional sorts of hunting knives over here. Those are gorgeous. Wow. Like okay, so tell me a little bit about this guy. This is a piece that I um, completely made from scratch. Um, I wanted to build a, a small black powder pistol, and I had a friend that had some original antiques, and I, he was kind enough to let me borrow one and take it completely apart. And I handmade all the parts, and then I made molds off of the parts, so these pieces can all be uh, lost wax cast I made every spring and screw in this particular piece. So you actually made the springs and the screws and everything with it. Every single thing. It's amazing. All, and this is flint here? That's, that's correct. And then look at the trigger on the bottom of the trigger, how he curled that over. It's beautiful. Nothing's crazy. And is this the knife with the special trigger guard? 
Is it the knife with the special gun? Oh, gun. Or gun. Gun knife. <laughs> sorry, I'm having one of the moments. So. The, the silver parts on this um, came from uh, my late wife and I had matching uh, silver bands that I made when we got married. And when she passed away, I took my band and put it in with the extra pieces of silver that were left over from the project. And I cast her, my ring in with the rest of the silver. So I have a, a piece that I can remember her by. And you can never get rid of this. Nope. That's awesome. So beautiful. This is a, a straight razor, traditional old straight razor I made for doing some historical reenactment. This piece is what would be called um, a parts gun. Um, in the Revolutionary War, uh, it would have been considered a, a committee of safety gun. It's made of various different bits and pieces. Uh, there's some French parts, some English parts. What are we on for time? And uh, I put this whole thing together myself. It's beautiful. The barrel is short. Mostly because they, if they would have had a, a firearm that had a bent or a broken barrel, they would have cut it off and put parts together so they had serviceable pieces. Um, the, the Continental Army didn't have much for um, firearms, and so they had to put together anything they possibly could to continue fighting the war. That's so awesome, man. <laughs> um, do you heat treat your blades or do you send them off? I have my own heat, uh, digital heat treating oven. I heat treat all my own uh, material. <clears throat> so the way if I happen to make a mistake on a part, I can go ahead and make another one right away and yep. put it in the oven and be done the same <clears throat> day. I don't have to wait for pieces. And uh, are you a mem member of the Knife Guild? <laughs> I've been a member of the Knife Makers Guild since 1991. Uh, I've served on the board of directors and as one of the past presidents of the guild. And what about a website, like, a, do you have a, you, you, a YouTube channel, a website, or a phone number, email address, and all that stuff? And he does, and I'm answering the question for you. <laughs> and it's uh, Shadley Knives, and that's his face on Facebook. And his, uh, his phone number is 218-999-7197. And his uh, email address is uh, ShadleyKnives at Hotmail.com. You guys got to go check him out. And uh, there's one last question. I'm gonna leave that one up to you about uh, somebody we talked about. Oh, you're talking about Michelle? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Michelle uh, would have liked to have been here today. Um, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and, Michael. Uh, unfortunately, was not able to. Um, hope to catch up with him soon and uh, give him some pointers on uh, what to do with some of this stuff. It's uh, there's so many different things you can do, um, but I like to share information. I have. I've written a book about what I do, and um, wow. <laughs> knife makers like to share information, and it's a great yep. thing. A lot of the old trades, everybody took their secrets to their grave, and we've lost lots of information. It's really nice um, that people are willing to share. What's the name of your book? How I Make Multi-Blade Folding Knives. And that's just the name of your book? Yeah. <laughs> it's available My... through me. <laughs> okay, great. Same contact information. Awesome. Wow. Well, I guess that's about it. We'll cut this video short. Oh, wait. We haven't, huh? we haven't seen the cute little tummy. Oh, yeah. Can you tell, talk about oh. uh, <laughs> the little hatchet there and what it is and all that? This little axe is called a, a bag axe. It's something that would have been carried on the frontier behind your shooting pouch for doing small <clears throat> uh, camp chores. Very small, very lightweight, uh, fully functional. It's made out of high carbon steel and... Um, I make those as well. Oh, and uh, while we're here, if you don't mind, I have a magazine with you in it, <clears throat> and I'd like to get your autograph. Absolutely. Sweet. There you go. Thanks, brother. Excellent, man. <laughs> Very good.